No one's done a project that is quite as intense as what we're doing. I'm Marissa Conklin, and this is XConnect Northwest, connecting you to the experts. I'm joined here today with Daniel Auerbach, um, a WSU grad student that studies salmon spawning with a drone. Oh, what was the method that they previously used to study salmon spawning? So the method they previously used and what they're currently using is uh, they use boats and or walking to identify these reds. So they literally have people floating down the river and looking out for these salmon nests or what we call reds in the field. So can you walk us through the process of what it's like and what you do when you go out with the drone and study? Yeah, so we picked three sections that are a kilometer long along the river and we essentially have the drone and we set up these missions to go fly a grid along the river um, and obviously there's a lot of planning that goes into that and different variables but we then go out to these different sections and take the drone off and it goes and flies its grid uh, and takes a whole boatload of images about 200 per kilometer and then we bring them back to the office and stitch them together and then overlay them on GIS and we're able to identify the reds from there. How successful has this method been or how successful do you predict it will be? Right now we're really just beginning the project um, and there's reason to believe that it will be successful. Uh, Idaho has done projects where they've been able to identify reds using drones and there's also been some studies in Europe that have been able to identify uh, fish reds using drones. Um, and based off the information we've gotten this summer, uh, we are, we're able to see the river bottom, um, which is obviously what we need to see to be able to visualize these reds and count them. So there's reason to believe that we're gonna be really successful. As of right now, it's at the very broad level, right? No one's done a project that is quite as intense as what we're doing. Um, so right now, in the broadest sense, success would be that can we see these reds? Um, are we able to identify them? And then further down the road, success will be measured in how comparable these studies are using aerial images to what fish and wildlife is getting using the methods, methods that they've used in the past. So why is it important that we study salmon spawning in this area? So as I'm sure you know, salmon in the Pacific Northwest are awfully iconic. And you know, when people think of Washington, Alaska, Oregon, they think salmon, it's an amazing species. And these studies are very unique in the sense that um, we're able to see these fish both at the end of their life cycle as adults coming back to spawn and then really seeing it at the first stages of the life cycle as well when they dig these nests and lay their eggs. So it's, it gives us a baseline of how many fish have returned and obviously there's factors that we can use besides that like counting them as they go over dams and such and then but really what we're focusing on is the fact that we're seeing the, the the baseline, the first predictions of what may return in years to come. So it's really the first indication of population estimates in the river. This has been XConnect Northwest, and you can find more episodes on our Facebook page at Northwest Public Broadcasting. Okay.